But let's talk a bit about how I start the conversation. And this is where I, the point that I have got to um, and the way I do it. And it, it works for me, it's comfortable for me, and I'll explain to you why I do it the way I do it. And, you know, I always, I, I, I put this diagram together because I had a method in my own mind of what I would say when people did, when, when, I, when I knocked on a door and I spoke to people, but then I thought I would map it out and actually show you in a, in a sort of diagram what goes on in my mind when I start a conversation. And whoever goes solving with me today will sort of see that I, I don't follow this exactly, but it's sort of what I, what I have. And I, I would recommend starting off with a script. If you're not very confident with soul winning, start off with a script so you know what you're going to say. Because generally when you start soul winning, you're going to be so nervous that you might know your first question, but if you don't know your second question, you might just sort of choke there and not get the conversation to flow, right? And, and once, you, once you create that awkwardness in that situation, it's very hard to, to get rid of it. So I think it's very good to have a script to know what you're going to say next to keep that conversation flowing because it's not that we're trying to manipulate the person or anything, but we want to create an environment that's comfortable so that that person is comfortable. And we don't want to just start that conversation where everything's uncomfortable and then they're really not listening to you. They're just thinking about how uncomfortable they are. So when I knock on a door and they answer the door, the first question I ask them is, you know, hi, my name is Victor. I'm handing out a pamphlet that explains how a person can be sure of heaven. Is it okay to leave one with you to read later? Now, whether they answer yes or no to that question, it doesn't matter to me. I'll ask them, hey, do you, do you ever think about these things? So whether they say, oh, you know, yes, I'll take the pamphlet or no, no, thank you. I just ask them, hey, do you ever think about these things? And again, whether they say yes or no, whether they say they think about them or sometimes or no, they don't think about it, then I ask them the question, well, has anyone ever explained it to you? Has anyone ever explained to you what it takes to go to heaven? Or has anyone ever showed you from the Bible um, you know, what it actually takes to be go to heaven? Now, if they say yes, and they say, well, you know, they, they do know or somebody's explained it to them before, then I would ask them the question, well, well then, I would, then I would ask them the question that we all ask them. Well, if today was your last day, you know, would you be 100% sure if, if you were to die that your soul would be in heaven? Or would you, have some, would you have some doubt? I think it's great to have that little bit on the end, would you have some doubt? Because if you just ask somebody, you know, you're 100% sure if you were to die today, you would be in heaven. Even if somebody's pretty sure, they'll still say yes. But I find it's very good when you ask them, or do you have some doubt? Because then it makes them focus on the doubt that they have. And now they know that they're not 100% sure because they know that they have some doubt and you've brought their attention to that doubt. And, um, you know, if they, if they say yes, then I might ask them, you know, what do you think the reason is that God will let you into heaven? At that point, they might say an objection. They might, you know, and I'll go through a couple of those in, in, in the meanwhile. But when you get to that, you basically will object uh, address the objection or address whatever they've said and this is the end point that I'm trying to get to. I'm just trying to get to that question, well, you know, would it be okay if I took a few minutes to explain it? Because um, if somebody said at that question, if today was your last day, would you be 100% sure you were, would go to heaven or if you have some doubt and they said no, then I would just go straight to that question. I'd say, well, would it be okay if I just took a couple of minutes to explain it to you? And then you'd get yes or no and if yes, they explain, if no, they might have objections and then you know, it gets a bit more complex as you go from there. Now, uh, just a couple of points on why I have this approach, my reasoning behind this. Now, when I was first taught to go soul winning, a lot of independent Baptists that are taught when they go soul winning, they usually start the conversation by inviting somebody to church. They'll say like, hey, how you doing? My name is Victor. I want to invite you to a Baptist church, or I want to invite you to a local church, or I want to invite you to a Christian church, whatever. But they start that conversation by inviting somebody to church. Now, the reason why I stopped doing that was because I found when I start the conversation with church, I had to get it off church. And then they were just stuck there thinking that I was trying to get them to come to church. and I didn't want that. So that's why I started, started my conversations with, hi, and actually just to tell them what I'm actually doing, right? Because I'm not, because I'm not there to invite them to church, am I? I'm there to, to, to explain to them how to go to heaven. So I thought, why don't I just start the conversation that way? So I started saying, hi, my name is Victor. I'm handing out a pamphlet that explains how a person can be sure of heaven. And then I know straight away the topic is on that, uh, the conversation is on that topic. And it's very easy for me to transition into that topic because I'm already on that topic. 
I don't have to bring up a topic of church and then say, well, you know, it's nothing to do with church. I wanted to actually do this. So that's why I, cho- I say it that way. I just find it's a bit more comfortable for me, a bit easier to transition into uh, talking about heaven, talking about the gospel, whether they know for sure they're going to heaven. And, you know, I don't have to try and get off the topic of church. You know, sometimes we even preempt, I even preempt and say, you know, I'm not here to invite you to church. I'm here to, to do this. Sometimes in Australia, I think it makes people just a bit more comfortable because everyone's out there trying to get them along to their thing or get them to join something. And we want to make it clear, like, hey, I'm not here for you to join anything or to commit to anything. I just want to have a conversation with you and explain something to you. Now, why do I say, you know, I'm handing out a pamphlet instead of handing out a gospel tract? So I would, I would uh, not recommend that you use overly Christian words, words that we are very familiar with, but are not necessarily familiar to other people. Because to somebody that's outside of church, what is, it, what is a gospel tract? Before I started going to church, well, even when I was in church for a couple of years, I didn't even know what a tract was. Like, what is a gospel tract? So, what is the gospel? You know, like, people don't even know what that means. You know, they think the gospel is uh, obey Jesus and live a good life. You know, they don't know that the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection and just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So I don't use, I don't always try to use words like salvation, justification, sanctification, um, things like that because uh, it doesn't mean anything to them. I want to speak in words that are easy to be understood. So that's why I just say, you know, I'm handing out a pamphlet, I'm handing out a leaflet, I'm handing out a brochure that explains how a person can be sure of heaven. Um, now the reason why I don't go straight into this question if today was your last day would you be 100% sure your soul would be in heaven because that question it's a very offensive question to people and the reason why it's a very offensive question is because most people think you have to do good works to go to heaven and how many times do you ask people do you know for sure if you die today you go to heaven they go whoa that's a personal question they think it's a personal question because it's very inflective of, oh man, they, now they got to think, am I good, am I bad, how much do I sin, how much do I don't sin? So because it's a very confronting question, people are easily offended by it. And that's why I felt that if I had a different approach where I asked them a few leading questions, it, it, it lessened the blow of the question that I was going to, which was, do you know for sure if you, went to, if you would go to heaven if you died today? You know, and that's why I, I added that question. You know, do you think about these things? So I said, you know, you, you know, do you think about where you go when you die? And, and so I'm sort of, you know, like a serpent, right? I'm subtly going to the question that I want to get to. You know, do you think about these things? Has anyone have, has explained it to you? And I just feel that when, I, when I've asked a couple of those questions and they've sort of have spoken to me a bit already, when I ask them that more confronting question, it's a bit less in your face. And that's why I do it that way. So I say, you know, I'm handing out this pamphlet. You know, do you ever think about spiritual things? Do you ever think about where you go when you die? Um, yes, no. You know, was everyone, anyone ever explained to you from the Bible how you can know for sure you're going to heaven? Yes, no. Uh, yes, you know, well, if, if today was your last day, you know, do you know 100% sure that you'd be in heaven or you have some doubt? Um, and that's how I start the conversation. Now, the last point I'm going to get to here. Would it be okay if I took a few minutes to explain? I just wanted to mention that I personally always ask for permission to give somebody the gospel. I personally just don't just go straight into it. I know a lot of people that I've gone soul winning with do. And if that works for you, fine. I mean, if it's working, you know, don't stop doing it. The reason why I prefer not to, I have found in my own experience that if I start talking to somebody and I just go straight into the gospel and I just go straight into talking about salvation and just, you know, Romans 3, Romans 6, and, you know, with, without even stopping, you know, I, I say hello and then I give them 20 minutes. I, I find that the person is not really listening because, first of all, you don't even know whether they're not they're interested in listening to you. Maybe they had an objection that they're thinking about when you're talking to them. Maybe they don't even know yet why you're even explaining to this to them and they're just thinking, why are you talking to me about all this stuff? You haven't given any context to why you're presenting this to them. And I don't want that. I, I want to know that if I'm going to take the time to, to talk to somebody you know, and go through the gospel, I want to know that they're listening and not just thinking, oh, when is this guy going to take a breath so that I can tell him to, to, to leave? So that's the reason why I prefer to ask for permission. I will always say, you know, is it okay if I take a couple of minutes to just explain it to you and show you a couple of Bible verses? Then if they say yes, then I know I have their attention. I have their permission to, to take a bit longer. Now, if they... If they're not interested and they don't give me any, uh, any time, I still will try and leave them with something. I'll just say, hey, well, just in 30 seconds, you know, this is why we're here. Most people think you have to 
be good enough to go to heaven, but the Bible tells us it's a free gift. It just says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. And that's what the pamphlet explains. So hopefully have a read and a bit, a think about it. If you have any questions, you can contact us. So I always try and leave them with one verse, leave them with a thought. So that the, the reason why I think it's important that we leave them with that thought is because we want to make sure that they know we weren't there just to get them to go to a church. That that was the reason why. Um, so I feel, especially if you're using the approach, you know, can I invite you to a church and you don't get to say anything, that's the last thing they're going to think. They just think, oh, they're just here inviting me to a church. And I don't want, if I get a brief time to talk to them, to leave them with something, I want them to know the reason why I was there was to explain how they can be sure of heaven. So there's some points there. Now, what are some common objections? So that's how I start the conversation. If you have any questions about that later, you can ask me. Um, now, what are some common objections that people say when you're trying to start that conversation with them? I've just got three examples here. There's, you know, there's a million different objections that people give, and that's why we just need wisdom of how to, to deal with them. But the three main ones that I hear all the time is, you know, why, you know when you ask them, well, what do you think is the reason that God will let you into heaven? You know, I'm a pretty good person. Now, what do I, how do I swing that comment or that objection into the gospel? This is how I do it. When somebody says, you know, well, I think I'm a pretty good person. I think I'll be pretty good, good enough to go to heaven. What I say to them is, you know, that's what, that's what most people think. You know, many people think you have to be good enough to go to heaven. Um, but did you know that the Bible teaches that we can't be good enough? Is it okay if I just take a few minutes to explain to you what the Bible says? Now, the reason why I say that and the reasoning that I have behind that is if you say to them, hey, you know, most people believe that, many people believe that, you, you sort of make them feel feel comfortable saying like, hey, you're not the only one. You know, a lot of, everyone believes that. That's fine, you know, because everyone has that thought, you know, so I'm not trying to pick on you because you believe that. Hey, everybody does. Everybody we speak to does that. And, and that's true. But that's what I would say to sort of swing it around. I would just basically say, you know, I'd address the objection and I'd just say, you know, that's what most people think. Most people think you have to be good enough to get to heaven. But the truth is, the Bible says we can't be good enough. Is it okay if I take a few minutes to explain to you what the Bible says? What about if somebody says, you know, I go to you know, such and such Orthodox church or such and such Catholic church or such and such Baptist church or whatever. What do I say to that? If they tell me that they go to, a, go to some sort of church or, they, uh, or they, they know about Jesus. Well, my response to that is generally, if somebody says to me, well, I go to such and such Anglican church. What I normally say is, you know, my, first of all, you know, my purpose is not here is not to try and get you to come to a church. I'm not trying to get you to switch churches, so that's fine. So just ease their mind there. And then this is how I come across. I say, you know, many people that I speak to that go to a church, you know, they're very, they're very familiar with what Jesus did. You know, so I'm not here to tell, you know, they're very familiar that Jesus died, that he was buried, and he rose again, and who he is. But I say, but they're still not 100% sure that if they died, they would go to heaven. You know, what about yourself? So the reason why I come across like that is, you know, I want to make it clear, you know, I'm not trying to get you to switch churches, so I want to clear that out of their mind. And I say many people we speak to that go to a church are very familiar with Jesus because I want them to know, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to teach you something you already know, you know, because you probably already know about Jesus. You know, he died and he rose again. So I say, you know, many people we talk to or I speak to, they, they know about Jesus. They're very familiar with who he is. And then this is when I swing it back to the 100% job. But... If they were to die today, they're not 100% sure that they would go to heaven. What about yourself? Do you know for sure or do you have some doubt? And then I'm back in here and then, I, and then I ask them, is it okay if I take a few minutes to explain? And you might get, you know, an injection that's like, I don't believe in X. You know, I don't believe in heaven. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in hell. I don't believe, whatever they, I don't believe the Bible is God's word. You know, whatever objection that is where they don't believe in something that you're trying to, to, t to tell them, my response is generally the same. I just say, oh, I just say, okay, that you don't believe in that. But has anyone ever explained to you what the Bible says a person has to do to go to heaven? So I just, you know, I just acknowledge that that's an objection. I say, oh, okay, you know, that's, some, you know, that's, that's interesting. But then I just bring it back to, well, has any, anyone ever explained to you? you know, and then I'll just go through the same, you know, well, is it okay if I take a few minutes and just explain it? If nobody's actually ever explained it from the Bible and just keep it on the gospel. And then I'll address their objection later on after I give them the gospel. 